Well, God bless you, Mount Zion Wings of Glory. I am here today in my office at home to try to send this little uh, piece of the Sunday school lesson out into your ears, hoping and praying that it will be uh, beneficial to you since we are not uh, able to uh, be together uh, at this time. We are believing God that uh, you uh, as Sunday school um, students have already uh, studied your lesson and you would be ready uh, on tomorrow to be in Sunday school. But with the present conditions, uh, we find ourselves uh, not able to be there. But what we do know is that wherever we are, God is, and we are thankful uh, for that. We are thankful uh, that this lesson gives us to note that God sent his servant into this world. Uh, lesson uh, today, uh, for April uh, the 5th, God's just servant. And we know that there are many servants uh, in the world today, but here we are referencing God's just servant, uh, the servant of God. As we prepare to look at this lesson, we would like to lift up a word of prayer. Uh, Father, we love, we praise, we honor you, we magnify your holy name, for great is your name and greatly to be praised. We know, O oh God, that we just know and see in part, but you know all things. There is nothing hid from you, for you are the God of all creation. We are here now, Father, in the name of Jesus, asking you to help us as we go forward. Help us uh, in this endeavor. Touch and bless the hearts and the minds of each who uh, would view this uh, Sunday school lesson and help us to be those who want to walk circumspectly before you in the steps of a just servant. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen, amen, and amen. And glory be unto the Lamb, the precious, precious Lamb of God. The text here, or the subject here, says God's just servant. Our Bible basics is Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, 1 through uh, the 9th verses. Our Bible truth, Isaiah prophesies about God's servant who will restore justice, the coming Messiah. And when we read that, we think about social justice and all the things that men are think, talking about today and looking for justice uh, in this world. But there will only be uh, real justice when we have surrendered to uh, the Lord, uh, the God who has created us in his image and in his likeness and put his spirit uh, uh, in us. That's when we will see justice when he comes back again, and he is coming back again. Memory verse, Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Isaiah 42 and 1. Lesson aim by the end of this lesson, we will evaluate the concept of Messiah <clears throat> since the wonder of Jesus rule as servant to the nations and imitate Jesus as a servant of God who exercises justice. Our Bible background is Isaiah 
uh, 42, reading the 42nd uh, chapter of the book of Isaiah. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. And when we read that, we understand that God has sent a prophet to talk to uh, this uh, nation of Israel, but he's pointing them to, to note that the, the, the one he's sending is going to bring in also the Gentiles, those whom you don't think uh, too much of. Those who you think are, are just outcasts and not uh, worthy to be looked at as something that uh, someone that God would uh, be concerned about, but He will uh, bring justice even to uh, the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the streets. In other words, he won't be boastful. He won't be braggadocious as some are today. He won't be loud uh, as so many are today. But he will be a gentle servant going through uh, and a meek servant going through this world uh, doing what God has sent for him to do and performing that which God has ordained for him. A bruised reed shall he not bruise, and the smoking flax shall he not quince. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his law. The judgment of God uh, in righteousness is here in the earth today. But it's depending on feeble man to surrender himself to the judgment of God and righteousness then will be a byword in the in the in the in the world, because man in himself uh, have so many wrong thoughts and selfish thoughts that he is looking out uh, for him number one, and having not the desire to look for peace and look for justice and look for things for others. Uh, he's looking for himself. But God sent a servant who looked not to himself, but to humanity, this old world in which we live. When you begin to think about all the things that are going on in the world today, I want you to continue to remember that we are living in a fallen world. All right? We are living in a cursed world. All right? Jesus came, it is true, and he brought light and he brought justice to a dark world. But until he comes back, we are yet going to have to fight with and deal with the elements of this world. And sometimes our biggest enemy will be our self and our selfishness. Thus said God, the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out. He that spreads forth the earth and that which cometh out of it. He that giveth breath unto the people upon it and spirit to them that walk therein. All of the, all of the uh, philosophers of the day and the atheists and all of these people who are running around dealing with how the world came to be and the scientists, so-called science, talking about Big Bang theories and all of these other things uh, for this world in which we live. I want you to 
revisit the word of God and remember God said, I did this. I stretched forth the heavens. And I want you to remember that his breath is in you. When God created man out of the dust, he breathed into his nostrils the spirit of life. And, and man became a living soul. Man cannot live today except by the spirit of God. If he removes his breath from the earth and he takes away his spirit, all flesh would die and go back to the dust from whence it came. I don't care how uh, astute you are. I don't care if you are uh, so brilliant that you could be called another Einstein. When God removes his breath and removes his spirit, you are gone from here. You can't maintain life uh, without God. And the quality of life which we live here cannot be lived but by God. If God does not intervene for us, we are in trouble. There is no depth to which man won't sink if God is not with him, if he have not surrendered to God, if he have not been born again, and we must be born again. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand. I will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles. God said this of his son that he was sending into this sinful world, and he's saying this to us today that have said yes to him. When we say yes to the Lord and have been uh, born again, God is saying, I'm with you. Many things may befall you in this world, but I am with you. I know that we are in a time now of crisis all over the world. Uh, folk are worrying about this virus and what it's going to do and how long it's going to last and what it's going to do to the economic system. And all of these things are in the hands of God. What we have to do is trust God. Now, that's the, that does not mean that we are supposed to be foolish. And just run around and do things as usual. We need to follow the mandates that have been given us. We need to not uh, be assembling ourselves and yet uh, because we don't really know. And they don't either how this thing really is transmitted. But we do know that it's a dangerous thing. And we do know that people are losing their lives. But I want you to know today that the life that you live here in this world is given to you by God, and he has you in his hands. If you believe on him, right, you have to believe that he is God and that you have surrendered. Forget about me, myself, and I, and surrendered unto him. You now belong to him, and he is responsible for you. And he will hold your hand. He will keep you in these times of uncertainty. You just believe on him. Huh? Just believe on him. And when you say you believe him, then you have to act like you believe him. Don't be foolish. Everything that doctors uh, and scientists and, and whoever have, it is because the Lord has given them the wisdom. They couldn't get it without him, right? So if they're telling you that you need to stay put at home, stay put at home. Don't be foolish and call your neighbor and call your relatives and say, hey, come over my house. We, we're going to have a little party together. They, they said we can't assemble in the church, but we certainly can assemble in our homes. Well, don't you know if this thing is transmitted the way they think it is, then you can get it from your closest relative, from your friend next door, your friend down the street. Let's not be foolish. Let's be wise. Let's depend on God 
and go out and do the things that we need to do when we need to do it. Church, listen, I love you. I love each and every one of you. But I am not asking you to come out to be in service until we get some clarity about this thing that's going on now. We are going to obey the civil law. And we are not going to assemble ourselves together. Let me say in this, before I close out this lesson, that I am so uh, appreciative of what you have been doing and what you have done uh, for uh, the church, how you have uh, supported the church in this time of crisis, how you have made sure that your tithes and your offering made it to the church. You didn't go uh, somewhere and try to spend it or hoard it saying, I'm going to keep my money because I don't know what's going to happen. But you have been a, a, a supporter of the church, and I certainly uh, appreciate uh, that. And you continue to do that and watch God continue to uh, bless you. I know some of you, when you view this, you are saying, Pastor is just uh, talking and looking down. He must be reading this. No, I am not reading it. No, I'm not looking down. I'm looking at my face here in, on this thing, and it's a new thing to me. And it, to me, it looks like I'm looking down, but I am not. When I try to read, that's when I'm looking down, as I shall do now. It says, I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in in darkness, out of the prison house. Uh, I contend to you today that when this was penned, it was not uh, talking about just physical blindness, although the Lord did and do open blind eyes. But it was talking about those who were blind to justice, blind to the word of God, blind to the plan of God. And you don't have to be physically blind to be spiritually blind. All right? And I think that this is something that we need to look at. And I want you, please, to go over this lesson for yourself. Go back and forth over this lesson. Do research in this lesson. And then call one another and talk about this lesson, what you got out of it. And, 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 and sometimes what you got might be right or it might be slanted. And when you talk to someone else, they might be able to point you uh, in a different direction, as it were. All right? So do this for me, please. Study the lesson. Deal with the lesson background. And run references. Every time you have this Sunday school lesson, I want you to read the uh, background scriptures. I want you to read the scriptures that for daily Bible uh, reading. Read those, and when you read them, don't just read them. Read them and study them and ask God to give you understanding, and then go back and run references on them so that you will be fully equipped to understand what the lesson is trying to get across to us now. I know if we live long enough, we will come back to this lesson again. And I know some of us who have been around the church for a minute have been over this lesson before, but you can always get something new from the Word of God. All right? It said, I am the Lord, that is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Now, you know, and studying that the Israelites had uh, come to a place where they did uh, bow down. They did worship uh, idols and statues, and which is one of the reasons that they ended up being carried away into captivity. But they come back home, and when they come back home, God is saying to them, uh, uh, here's how I, I want 
you to live. Give glory to me and always uh, praise me and always seek me. I have everything you need. I am the Lord. I am God. Uh, when he spoke to Moses, he said, tell him I am. I am what? Anything and everything you need, I am. I'm your strength. I'm your deliverer. I'm your, I am your bread. I am your water in a dry land. I am God. Believe me. He says, behold, the former things are come to pass. And new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. I said, there's nothing hid from God. There's nothing God does not know. And he said, I'm going to tell you about these things. But I want you to look back at what has already uh, transpired, what has already happened, and then look to me that I may show you the things that shall come. Don't, don't get confused. Don't get discombobulated here in this world. Keep holding on to me. Yes, bad things will happen, will come to pass. I sat on last evening after working in the church and coming home and sat on my couch and tried to relax some because I was so tired. And the next thing I know, here by me, they were shooting like they was in the wild, wild west. And I thought, Lord, you know, sitting here in the front of this uh, picture window, I could get shot just sitting here doing nothing but minding my own business. But I believe God. I believe God has us. He has us here for a season. He has us here for a purpose. But don't get that twisted. I think the scripture says that a hard-headed or the bit did disobedient child won't live half of his days, which means that there is a appointed time for you to be here, but that does not mean that you're going to be here all that appointed time because you can do something to shorten that time. All right? Hold on to God's unchanging hands. Don't let anything deter you from holding on to God. Keep looking up, church. Keep looking unto him who is the author and the finisher of our faith. I know that I have gone short in this lesson. I know that I have not, as you said, gone, gone deep. Uh, but I've given you some overview and I've given you something I hope for you to think about as you go through uh, uh, next week. Uh, if the Lord allows... I will be streaming, I'll, I'll be on uh, YouTube on uh, Sunday morning at 10 o'clock live. I have a message, I pray I'll have a message that God gives me uh, to preach uh, uh, a mini message. Uh, I don't intend to stand there long preaching. I won't have you there to inspire me to say, preach on, preacher, preach on. Uh, but I do think that uh, I wish to have a word to put out for you uh, that you can grab a hold to if you would view uh, YouTube. It won't be a long message, but I, I think that God will give me something uh, to say. And I pray that you have gotten something out of these few words that I've talked about here in our lesson that's before us, it, coming out of the book of Isaiah. Our prayer. We praise ye, Father, for sending Jesus, who is Lord of all. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for regaining, for, for reigning in our hearts and giving us hope for the future. Thank you for delivering us from the power of sin and the penalty of death. We are so grateful for peace in our hearts and minds. We pray for peace among the nations. And we pray for the peace of Israel. 
May they recognize you as the Messiah who has come to earth to deliver us from sin. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding us of God's word when times are difficult. Strengthen us, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. I hope to see you soon. I hope uh, and pray that we will be able to gather together to have our hugs, our handshakes, and our uh, love shown in action one to another. God bless you. Amen, amen, and amen. Keep looking up. Keep looking up. He came. He's coming back again. Let's be ready when he comes.